Hi, everybody. Welcome to August 30th meeting of chaos and all your fellow chaotics are here. Um, I'm going to Matt G. I'm going to make you a co host in case somebody comes okay. you can let them in. Uh, where are you? Where's your name? There it is. I like your new little icon thing. Let me co host. Thanks. Did you draw that or? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just asking because it's cool. Um, yeah. So here we go. I think this is the right window. I hope it is. Not MC Hammer. Y'all don't want to see that. <laughs> no, that is not MC Hammer. <laughs> okay, good. The King of Spain absolutely counts, yes. Yes. Alex yes. Beck, yes. All of these count. All, all people with king and queen titles count for sure. Yeah. Okay, so let's jump into our agenda. Um, yeah, we have, we have a few things to talk about. Cool. So the first thing is, is Ruth here? I don't see Ruth. Okay, that's okay. And there is a new handbook structure. Ruth and Troy and I um, had a meeting about this. So we wanted to get some feedback. Um, again, we just want to make sure that the more eyes on this, the better we feel like. Um, this is kind of where we're headed. Um, so yeah. So I don't know if we want to take time to look at this now and give feedback now, or if you all want to do this async. Were there changes that kind of came from the last time that you wanted to highlight? Um, yes, uh, if I were to list them all, I don't know that I could do that. Um, okay. But okay. we kind of just kept changing our minds and moving stuff around. So there are some changes. Um, we're trying to align this structure with the structure that will be on the website and the knowledge base too, because those two things are very much integrated. So um, yeah. uh venya says can we add a section for branding under media and outreach yes yeah i thought we had that in here um yes do you want to leave a comment in this issue here with to that effect i'll just drop the issue right here would be great and so like it maybe it will be going more under logo i don't know actually media and outreach it probably seems like it would make sense there so is the idea to build like this out i see some of them have links like path to leadership yes so you're showing yes. on the screen mm -hmm. okay yes there will be docs for all of these things um and it, within, okay. the, within the docs there are different sections obviously you know okay. like yes so how but many we're just looking for the structure mostly is what I kevin gotcha. They need that kind of locked okay. in sooner than later. So, so how much of this? How much of this yes. has like already existing documents behind it? You um, know. Oh, I would say most of them. Okay. Yeah, most of them do. Or, or sections from one doc will like mm -hmm. flop it together in a, something else. So okay. yeah, it's mostly the structure of it that's moving around. A lot of the docs are the same. Okay, and then Kevin needs this because this is part of the website or it's going to be like, in, like accessible through the website yeah the knowledge base um mm -hmm. will take uh this um these high level folders mm -hmm. and that's kind of what will be the lumps the categories in the knowledge base okay but then the docs within them can move around and change and whatever and that doesn't matter like that's okay. fine you can okay. do that but like to get that knowledge base to the po point where it's getting populated, we they mm -hmm. need that like top level structure. Okay. So yeah. All right, cool. I see Kevin's on. I don't know if you want to add anything, but uh, the the one comment I would have is that the uh, the more explicit the names of these folders are, the better off we are. Uh, so if the if the folder names can be descriptive of the content that's in them, that would be very helpful. Uh, so if and you're if you're looking at a folder and you're not exactly sure what's in it then we, we should probably rethink the uh, folder name. And, and my understanding, Kevin, is that this will be the name of the folder. How work is done in chaos will be the name of that folder. 
Is that okay? Um, I guess. Yes, I think so. I don't know. I I haven't. We'll try. Uh, okay, I hadn't. I hadn't heard that. So I was. Uh, uh, I'll have to give that some thought. Yeah, when we yes, when um, Shoya and Ruth and I met, we I brought that feedback that you had given that okay. we want to make that explicit. So that's kind of why we did did it that way. Okay. Like so, you know how we work, work is done in chaos seems to be pretty. It's in like software working groups and community projects and things like that. Okay. Yeah, I know those are. I know those were based on kind of my my notes on what I thought should be in those folders. Uh, yeah. But as a, as a yeah as a naming convention for the folder, I hadn't uh, I hadn't thought that through. So I'll I'll give that some thought, and I'm, I apologize for missing that uh, that meeting. No worries, no no, it's totally fine. It's totally fine. Yeah, we can we can take that async too. And there's well. also you can drop it in the issue too, Kevin. Yeah, hundred percent. Oh, certainly, yeah. Okay, cool. Um. Yeah. And so again, anything that people have to add, um, just drop it in that issue for Ruth and Shoya, since neither are here. And, and thank when, you. When, for are, when are they? When are they done? Sorry, I cut off your thank you. <laughs> oh, you're fine. No, um, I think the so the Google season of Docs project goes till like November. Oh, so November. They have a lot more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah it goes oh. on a while. Okay. Yeah, it's long. Long, se long season. Yeah, it's a marathon, not a sprint. That's right, <laughs> for All sure. Right. So we they have pr plenty of time to like get those docs organized and everything, but we just didn't want to hold up the knowledge base team because that project is coming to an end very, pretty soon. So Sooner, um, yeah. yeah. Okay, oh, that's helpful. Thank you. Yep. Okay, so number two on the agenda, we have a very exciting thing to announce or to pre-announce, I guess. Um, at the um, upcoming Chaos Con on September 12th, we are going to be launching a Chaos Community Survey. This is coming from the DEI audit team and also a few of us um, on the call here that have been working with the DEI audit team. Um, to put this survey together. So um, we're really excited about it. Um, it's going to tell us more about our community, more about how people are feeling in the community, especially with regard to the newcomers in the community. So we really um, hope that this will give us more insight and help us center DEI as we always try to do with everything we do. So we're really excited about that. Um, when it is launched, we highly, highly, highly encourage everyone to take it. But before that, we are looking for just a few people to kind of do help us do a run through um, and just make sure that it flows and that it's working and that it's understandable and all of those things. So um, I see Sophia has volunteered in chat to be one of those people. Thank you very much, Sophia. We appreciate you. You're awesome. I run a lot um, of surveys, so hopefully that will help. Yes, 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 it will. Thank you. Um, you do not need to have that experience, um, but it is helpful. But if you don't have that experience and you wanna be a tester, um, we would still love that. That's also completely fine. We would, we would definitely welcome that, so. Feel free to drop your name there. Reach out to myself, Matt, or Sean, Matt G, or Sean, and um, let us know if you would like to be on that on that team. So and thank we've you. All, we've, all, we, we've all learned line survey. <laughs> we yeah. Didn't, we didn't know <laughs> we were completely lacking in skill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if you've never used Lime Survey, oh my goodness, it is a lot. There's a lot there. I mean, it's pretty robust, which is good, but like, ah, it's is a little over. The, this is the tool you're using. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's like the cockpit of a 787, so <laughs> it's a little <laughs> overwhelmingly functional. <laughs> yeah, it is. There were so many times we were like, just click that button. Just try that one. <laughs> just randomly pushing buttons. That should absolutely be their tagline, Sean, is overwhelmingly functional. I yeah. Guess. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm all about the taglines. For context, if anyone is looking for an open source survey tool, you'll end up with Lime Survey. 
Yeah. Yes, that is a key point. Thank you, Georg, for, for uh, yes, adding that, because that is why we went with it, because it was an open source tool. So, um, so yeah. And it's funny because it's as an open source tool, like it's way more robust than like SurveyMonkey, I think, or, you know, any of the non open source tools. So. <laughs> oh, wait, wait <stop>. a second. <laughs> Hold up. Danielle just said that today's Sophia's birthday. Is that true? Yeah. Happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday. Hi, happy birthday, Sophia. Thank you. <laughs> I think it's, it's worth celebrating that I'm not in Vegas. I spent so many birthdays in Vegas that I think VM World that every year that I don't, it's a celebration. I wish I would, I would have put a Vegas background. Do they have that in Zoom? We should find that and pretend like we're all in Vegas for the, for the purposes of the meeting. Yes. Well, happy birthday, Sophia. That makes me really, really pleased that you're spending time with us today. Yeah, we need to be doing other things that might be birthday ish, but we appreciate you being here because we like happy you. to be here. Yay. And you're even volunteering for things on your birthday. So man, over and above. Love it. Oh, here comes Ruth. Okay. All right. So um, back to the survey. More will be coming soon. We just wanted to give everybody kind of a heads up that that's coming. So keep an eye out for it because we are really, really, really going to value your opinions, value your insight and your feedback and your voice. And we want everyone to take that. So um, stay tuned. All right. Um, anything else to add to that? Matt, Sean? No, I think that's all good. Okay. The next thing on our list is teams at chaos. So a little context about this, Matt G and Ruth and I had a quick meeting, not a quick meeting. We had a regular meeting about <laughs> teams and newcomers uh, on chaos and how we can, you know, we're always looking to make that process easier and make that onboarding um, experience better. So we kind of came up with this idea Oh, and it says I don't have access to my own file. Sweet. <laughs> Probably a chaos file or some sort. Okay, so reason. in the meantime, Matt, if you're in there, can you just grant <coughs> access to us all? Uh, yeah, hold Hopefully on. Hopefully you can get in it. I don't Ooh, know. Well, I'll find out here in a second. Okay, so um, some, some groups at chaos uh, are very clear cut working groups, for instance, those would be considered a team. Um, there are other areas that would be considered a team, the website team, the design team, um, other, other areas of chaos. But what we thought would be great for onboarders is to once they kind of get a feel for what chaos is about, like on a high level, have this concept of teams that they can join. So they're joining a thing, they're, they're participating in a thing. It's not this like blob of issues and blob of of stuff happening. It's more of like, I'm going to join a team that kind of speaks to what I care about. And I'm going to go from there. And from there, there will be direction from the team lead or the team roadmap that, that team as to where best that person could contribute. Instead of like me as a community manager over all of chaos trying to figure out what would be good for people to join, we thought maybe we would leave it at the team level to decide kind of how people could best contribute to that team. Am I making sense at all? Can I get like a nod or a thumbs up or something? You can share your screen now or the click the link now. Okay. Yeah. I... Okay, awesome. So um, we did want to set some expectations for newcomers that, you know, you would you would not be assigned something in the very first week of, of being a part of a team. Um, but, you know, that's a good place to start to get to know chaos a little deeper and a place where you can can contribute directly. Um, you may have noticed if you're on this call, you may have been assigned <laughs> a team. Hopefully that's not a huge surprise to you. Don is, you know, the lead of common, for instance, we did not reach out to Don and say, hey, we're adding you to the spreadsheet, but that's pretty standard. You know, it's pretty, I think Don is aware that she leads the, the common working group um sophia happy birthday and are you cool being listed as the contact for risk yeah that's fine okay <laughs> there are a few that we don't really have team leads for we weren't 
quite sure um, like how that would work out because it's like a new thing. So um, there are some opportunities if somebody wanted to, um, you know, kind of take something and run with it or kind of step up and be a lead of this tea. Um, that would be awesome. Uh, the Slack bot in particular. So, uh, you know, Ruth and I were the mentors and Matt C was a was a co-mentor as well. And um, I don't know, like, I don't want to assign that to anybody who worked on that, but if anybody from that group wants to, to I don't know if Precious or Midi is on here today, but. <coughs> yeah, and I can ask uh, Midi or Precious if they want to lead that team. Yeah. Workshop this tomorrow, so I can ask. Awesome. Awesome. Just to kind of keep it going and, you know, have that point of contact is really what we're looking for is like someone new. Here's a point of contact for you, a person that you can reach out to that can help you figure out where to go. Yeah. And if anybody wants to volunteer for mentorship, I'll say that it's a cyclical commitment. Um, all the applications and processes happen about the same time. And then there's six months of not much. Yeah, as a team lead here, you would just be kind of helping everybody stay on yeah. track, coordinating like <clears throat> what the dates things are, because like they they all have separate dates for everything of when evaluations are due, when our applications due, all of that stuff. So just helping yeah. organize that whole process. Yeah, I, I would say from my experience the last several years, the biggest thing is you need to spend a couple hours on the website, really understanding all the different rules, forms, and processes, because most of the websites aren't really well organized so that there's no punch list of what to do when typically. Also, this is not a, a, a complete list. I'm sure there are other teams that will pop up or if there are teams you're working on and you want to add them here, by all means, this is an open thing. It's a community effort. So feel free to add, change, whatever. If you see a, a description that isn't quite right, by all means, change it. If you know the meeting times, we just didn't complete filling it all out. So if you know, if you have a piece of information that fits on here and you want to add it, by all means, please do so. Did you mention this, Elizabeth, too? The hope here, like for a while we were talking about this and we were coming up with like things to do in the chaos project. Did you mention this? Like kind of a good first issue idea. And we were like, this is silly. Like we can't possibly know what, all of the tasks are, for example, in risk, or we can't possibly know, or the action items are in common. Like there's just, we can't track all of that all of the time. So the idea here was to kind of abstract that away and just say, if you're interested in these topics overall, then contact this individual. And then that's that top line, you know, you won't get an action item, but join, sit in and, and learn a bit. Um, and then you can start, you know how these working groups work, um, the action items just kind of show up week by week or every couple of weeks. And we thought that was a lot easier way of, of doing it without having to keep on like this giant updated action item spreadsheet for everybody. Are there questions, comments, concerns, feedback, anything? There are a few of these that tend to overlap. Um, is this like a more permanent document? Or are we just planning to organize this and then put it into that rule book? It's a good question. Uh, I think it's for now kind of a flu I would I would say it's a fluid document. Um, and then as things kind of solidify, like some pieces are solid, like the working groups are pretty solid, but other pieces are maybe ad hoc projects that are happening right now, or um, like you said, might like get absorbed into another team as, as time goes on. Yeah, I'd say it's pretty fluid right now. At the, at, when we were putting this together, we were just kind of typing anything that we could kind of think of, how, however <laughs> it may have appeared in our brain. Yeah, it's in no order, that, yeah. like just kind of like, oh, yeah. Elizabeth? Yes. Yes, I don't mind. I can help uh, with the mentor uh, mentorship team. Awesome. Do you want to add your name here as a lead? Yeah. Oh, Armstrong, that's awesome. 
I'm just wondering you and I should talk about okay. just about about like kind of the I don't know just what it looks like you know what I mean for the different mentorship programs that we do and kind of some yeah. of the thoughts that we have yeah. regarding yeah. mentorship in the future yeah and I can certainly help you with what are all the processes we need to go through okay we also have a best practices document that Christy had started from the DEI working group too that I, I don't even, I, I know it's in a doc somewhere, but I don't know where that like needs to live somewhere, either in the handbook yeah. or somewhere. So yeah. And to be clear too, I'm sorry, this isn't, this doesn't mean that you are now leading all mentorship efforts <laughs> in the <laughs> yeah. project. Yeah. <laughs> this means yeah. you're a point of contact <laughs> yeah. where people can yeah. get involved. So. <laughs> Because that can be a lot. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> no one can lead all those things themselves. I mean, it's a lot of work, I know. Yeah. It's just facilitating things, and we'll always yeah. be working as a team. Yep, cool. Uh, I have and added one. Uh, I have added one thing, Kiosk Communication slash Twitter. Like, I see Elizabeth, you doing, sending the weekly emails and tweets, so just... Uh, things for anyone who wants to have a chaos to eat or anything that may be a contact person. Excellent. Is this the, does this include what we were talking about last time with the, the social presence working group or marketing and communications working group or we haven't it fully could. defined it yet. Yeah, it could. This was just kind of what we had. Again, this is like a week ago, and it was just kind of what existed in the chaos project at the moment. Yeah, by no means is this definitive and it's fluid for sure. I should also say too, uh, as, the, as a leader, this does not mean you're the leader for the rest of time, for, for eternity. Like yeah, as we, oh, it's a lifetime as, commitment. It's like it's like joining the Supreme Court. You wouldn't want to quit these opportunities. I mean, just that, just how we happened last last week is Sean handed off the Evolution Working Group to Armstrong. So you know, we there are limits. Like you, you're not on the hook forever. I just want to make that clear that it is is yeah. time constraint. Like I mean, yeah, I think I think you find after leading one thing for coordinating one thing for five years. Uh, <laughs> having an, having another spark will will be helpful. Like I'm not going to go away from evolution, but it'll be helpful for it to be coordinated by a different person. What it may too sometimes. I mean, we may not want to. I don't know. We'll see how it kind of works. But like, if I look at this list too, I see you know on row 13 we have DEI badging, and on row 16 we have the badging bot. Mm -hmm. And it might be important to keep these two two separate. From each other even though you could also make a case to you know include the badging bot as part of dei badging so it, there may be something to be said about keeping them separate as well yeah i i liked having them separate just because it is more of like a software project that's kind of standing on its own and then like it serves the badging but it may also serve other pieces of chaos mm -hmm. too eventually so yeah, yeah. i kind of like them separate Yeah, so um, so there's that. And feel free again to drop comments or whatever. We don't really have this linked anywhere. Where should we put it? Just here for now? Mm, yeah, I don't know. Um, well, we have the community repo. I'm trying to think of the easiest way to. We could just open an issue in the community yeah. repo. Yeah, for you can now. also add it as a bookmark in some of the Slack channels, like mm -hmm. maybe general and newcomers. Yep, good idea. Yeah. yeah, I'm Shoya and Ruth are working on a doc that will be a quick start for newcomers. And I feel like it would live in there as well of like, okay, now that you know about chaos, go join a team. Or here are teams you can join as step two kind of a thing. So probably fits in the, the governance folder in the community repo. Okay. For now, I was just going to open an issue in the community repo pointing out to this. That was it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Uh, let's go ahead and go forward. We do have some other stuff to talk about. Chaos Project Badging. Matt, are you going to talk about yeah, that? Yeah, I can talk about that. I just wanted to give people a heads up that we're continuing to talk with uh, folks at All In. So if you're, you're probably most of you are familiar with All In, uh, a Linux Foundation project really focused on centering DEI within open source community work. So um, right now, the, the proposal moving forward, we've been talking with Demetrius, and the proposal moving forward is that we would be um, developing a DEI.md file, which you can access just by if you click on the chaos project badging link. Yep. And then go to resources. Yep. This would be a file that, that if projects wanted to participate in this project or the badging project, they would include uh, this file that talks about how they attend to each of these four metrics. So a couple of the metrics, if you go back to the minutes, a couple of these metrics are still um, being developed. So feel free to add comments. So newcomer experience and recognizing contributors are two metrics that we we have been working on and we're looking to to really just finalize for the badging project and if you go back to the dei.md file we do have a couple metrics uh, project burnout and inclusive leadership that have been developed so what we're asking is that communities put this dei.md file in the their repositories this would be at the repository level um and just really provide evidence or talk about how, as a community, they are addressing, in this case, a project burnout or how they're addressing inclusive leadership. We're not necessarily looking for strict answers because there could be a variety of different ways that communities could do this. But this is really the first step, just asking communities to, to put this or include this file in the repositories. And Ruth, did I see your hand go up? And and Matt, I know, I know when I first raised this after OSS NA, after I talked with Demetrius, we had thought about, we considered whether or not this generates a badge to have this document or a level of badging. And I, I, I think it, we're, we're, I know that GitHub may implement some indication that you have that file and give you some kind of github -y credit for it but uh, are we are we where are we on uh, this being a level of project badge do you think i'm not sure about the term badge kind of where yeah. we're at, at that point yeah. okay. so and that's uh, totally cool i, I just was yeah. uh, wanting to I'd, sort not avoiding the question i don't have a good answer yeah for okay it. fair and elizabeth if you could go back to the minutes again and so kind of to that point, Sean, we, we do really have to see that last point where you said this is certainly not a perfect solution, yeah. but a first step. So we have to provide language as to what we're hoping to accomplish by asking communities to do this. And um, what, in this case, I put badge, but what this automated badge indicates at this point, because unlike the event badging, we're really not looking at the content of the D humans are not looking at the content of the DEI.md file. Unlike an event application where people actually go and take a look at, at, the, at the submission and they follow the links and they read the stuff on the website. Um, I think, so, yeah, I think mainly it's a signal similar to the you know, contributing or code of conduct docs. It, it's a signal, first and foremost, that the project cares about that thing. Agreed. And we just have to state that really explicitly. Yeah. Up front. But that's really our hope here is that this is a first step in that signaling mm -hmm. yep, that a project prioritizes uh, DEI. As a as a signal that the project prioritizes DEI rather than rather than an explicit badge, maybe the uh, maybe the the thing that's displayed on the website could just be a statement that says this project uh, 
observes chaos DEI metrics and, and believes that uh, and prioritizes DEI or something like that. Uh, where it's where it where it reads as a statement by the project rather than a statement by chaos saying that they do it. Yeah. So, well, so is the the idea to have the project make that statement? Like, like would use they would obviously put this the DEI.md file in the repository, and then we. Would... I think the idea would be for them to them to make the statement, but we could encourage them to make it, and we could have a pre written a pre written post that basically says, you know, this project prioritizes DEI and follows chaos. Uh, DEI uh, best practices. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that would would that remove like an automated check for the file? You know what I mean? Uh, an automated check for the for the file itself. Yeah. So that was one of the. So like the thought was is is you would put the DEI.md file in a repository, mm -hmm. and based on its presence, kind of like a code of conduct file. Mm -hmm. It would be recognized uh, in this case, say by GitHub, as right. being present. You know what I mean? Without yeah. taking a look at the the uh, text that's actually in the file. Yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think it would have to remove the automated process. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm just I'm just the as a signal. We don't want it to. We don't want to like badge them and say, "Hey, this project uh, does everything right." Uh, DEI oh, wise, right? It's, it's, <laughs> totally, it's totally. more of a if they go through the process, if they if they've if they're wanting to get go through this process, then they're going through the checklist and they are kind of uh, participating in this process of mm -hmm. prioritizing their own DEI and reflecting on their DEI. So I think that's a uh, okay. I think the the simple fact that they're going through this process and creating the documents that we're asking them to to create, okay. I think is a is a statement that they are. Gotcha. prioritizing DEI in some fashion you, and I think that's fair for them to say. Could you um could you maybe try to write such a statement? You said it real, I thought you said it real well. You know just uh, like maybe yeah, like like two or three sentences maybe. Yeah, that just something that uh we would recommend that the community put. Something okay. Like that would be super helpful. Thank you. Um, so it's moving along. Um, again, it's not perfect, but we're, we're making good progress. Does anybody have any questions about this? Kind of what we're doing here. I don't have a question, but it was just a suggestion on the recognizing contributors metric. I think we can also like add a screenshot of um, how we recognize that contributors on metrics, you know, there's this part where we put in like the contributor's name on each metric. So we can yeah. have like a screenshot of that yeah. in. Don't, yeah. Yeah, no, that's, don't show this Elizabeth, go back. This is not, this is not the proper link. So click on, oh, yeah, go to the minutes. No, go to the minutes and click on it there recognizing contributors. This is the more updated. So the the link in there right now is just pointing to contributors, which is not really like what we want. This is a metric about. Reading Garrick's comment too. Yeah, you scroll down the, the, um, the screenshots we have. Yeah, scroll down a little bit. I think we can also prioritize like chaos um, ways of recognizing contributors and put okay. this one. You know, so it's, it shows. This was one I had. You seen that one before? I hadn't seen that top one go up a little bit. Is, have people seen this? It's about ways to, it's a bot that will add contributors to readmes. Automatic. Yeah, I have seen, I think I've contributed to a project that does this, but the thing with this is as contributors get to the readme, because it just gets very populated sometimes, like if the project's very popular. But yeah, this is also good as well. Like it's, it brings that sense of contribution for like new commerce. Okay. And I was, we could include the, yep, the chaos, um, the way that we recognize contributors there. And if you scroll down to, this is, this is 
perfect, not perfect by any means. This was open collective to recognize contributors like financial contributors. And then this is obviously insights as a way to um, recognize that with the across project. I don't know what that one is. Um, it's a project that some of my colleagues and the Project Ocean team have been working on to, it basically started as a series of workshops with community members talking about the ways that they document contribution and various types of contribution outside of just code and version and control systems and trace data. So mm -hmm. it's more of a collective conversation on how to recognize various different types of contribution and all the different ways that you can contribute. Mm -hmm. So it's more of a resource in terms of like being able to connect with other people that are thinking through how to apply this in their setting and in their context. This is great because one of the things that, um, that we also want to provide is, you know, if we're going to say, how are you recognizing contributors? For example, in this case, like here are resources that you can also, you know, if this is new to you as a community, this this idea, um, here are ways that you can think about it. So that's great. I'll definitely add that. Thank you. And then Benya, you had a comment to um, lock gate the MD file behind a checklist system. In other words, and only after confirming they've done things right. Um, so at this point, I, I think the answer to the question is no. Like there's no um, like person checking. Is that what you're asking there? I don't think it's really about a person checking. I'm just, uh, one of my main concerns is I can upload the file at any point in time and just doing a checksum for, is this present? I could literally just upload it. But I just wanted clarification on how that works. How do you confirm that the checklist has been followed through just by virtue of having the file in the repo? Um, I'm just asking because I don't know. No, I don't know. That's fine. Um, what so we, in turn, oh, go ahead, Sean. Which document are we talking about? The DEI document again? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's just not what we being shared. So that's what confused. Um, in the past, the way that GitHub has validated it is they look for appropriate sections and some legitimate text that looks like sentences. Um, so that's what they do for the contributing doc and the code of conduct. It's, it's not merely the presence of the document. As I understand it from talking to people at GitHub Universe four years ago. Yeah, I don't think that that is meant to be, from what I understand, I don't think it's meant to be like an endorsement or like no. uh, anything like you're guaranteed to have an awesome time if you come to this, <laughs> this open source project. I think it's just that they took the time to put that file in there and that it is a legitimate file. I think that's all it's looking for. There's no one really verifying that this community in fact does these things. So, so to your point, then yeah, yes, I mean, a community could put a, a DEI.md file and put, I think this is your point, they could put garbage in that file and it would be yeah. checked as present. Well, um, yeah, I mean, I, I would definitely say my concern is less that in more um the purpose of the program was to ensure a specific setup of things so if, if all of that is boiled into a file will people actually continue to move forward to those things over time because yeah. if the end result is insert a file it works just like an e-course certification would where if you just offer the certification for buying the product people over time just start to build the certification and don't go through the process for the product yeah. um it's an innocuous question, but yeah. Yeah, I think the, the goal, at least where we stand right now, is is really to get communities to reflect on these issues, not necessarily right. enforce them. And that's really kind of a first step. So just how as a community are you thinking about, in this case, these four right. individual things? Yeah, and my presumption is, culturally speaking, um, no one would necessarily do that because if they know that the program exists and they consider value in the file itself, then chances are they'll go through it. But it was just a question of process, really. OK. Well, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for the feedback. And thanks for the thoughts. And Matt, will we be talking more about these two metrics in the DEI working group? Or? Yes. OK. Mm -hmm.
I just wanted to be transparent here as well. Yeah, hundred percent. So if people are interested in contributing to these, you can add your comments now. You can also, we're, we'll be going over them again in the DEI working group meeting. So you can also attend that. Uh, okay, so are we good to move on? We're almost out of time. <laughs> I'll be super fast on the next one. I just want people to know in working groups, the issue here is the example issue. So this is for all minor edits. So you can just click on that. And this is how we have submitted to the translations repo that each one of these metrics has had minor changes to it mm -hmm. and we'll need um, need some retranslation on the metric. There are two in DEI that require major changes and we're going to have to go through that whole uh, community review process and the action item and we can figure this out in the DEI. Mm -hmm. group. So this is just for risk and for evolution and for common but that's how we went ahead and did it. So take this example and implement it in your own working groups for those minor changes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right. We have a minute. We have one minute. Wow, one okay. minute. All right, schedule okay. set. Chaos <laughs> it's, it's looking good. Hope to see you in Dublin. <laughs> There's the schedule. Right, I'm right. the t-shirts arrive on time, by the way. I did order some t-shirts. And I have poker chips. And Excellent. I have stickers. Excellent work. Thank you. And we will be putting the slides here as we get them from the speakers and such. Um, OK. We don't have a ton of time to talk about this. Do we want to use what minute? We have left to do it. Zero minute. I think, I think in lieu of doing that, we should just mention that Sean, Matt, and you had wanting to discuss scheduling a new conversation to discuss this. So we can set up a doodle poll for anyone who wants to be a part of that discussion. Um, to join us and discuss what a social presence working group would look like. Uh, what programs it will entail, uh, who will be heading it up, what that's going to look like for organizational um, participation, what it's going to look like for personal participation, all the things. Um, are we cool with that? Just setting up a doodle poll and having um, that conversation outside? What, what about uh, having it within the scope of this the web? We're not calling it the website meeting, but whatever that meeting is like what about they may not have room. yeah well this would um, supersede that participation wise because mm -hmm. there's a lot of the, there's a lot of people outside of website what if we start next week with this conversation before we yeah. start a side channel yeah if we have more conversations as part of this call okay yeah, and and um yeah i was the one that suggested a, a meeting and i think when we arrived at art the that we're all satisfied with. If we still, if we still, if you still think we need a meeting, then let's let's start by talking about it, um, either here or setting up a Google poll. But I agree with PR gets fine too. I begin just having a discussion here and getting a broad set of opinions. Yeah, and we can start next time talking about this so it doesn't get. So when I scroll down to real fast, the sliders. It's pretty cool too. Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. Is Django on uh, here? No, he's not here. But thank you very much to, to Django for that. I think it turned out really wow. nicely. So good. So these are the, for the website reason, these are the sliders that will go across the screen as we yeah. have the different paths to join. Yeah. I love the new contributor one. Very cool. Yeah, I, I really like that one too. Kevin, when is the website meeting next? Do you know? Have uh, Thursday. Thursday is the yep. the web content meeting, uh, and the ha the handbook and the design team also have been meeting. Uh, during the during this so uh 
or with or I'm sorry, Thursday, uh, 9 a.m. U.S. Central Time. Yep. So if you're interested in talking more about this design of the new website or any of the stuff that's going on there, this is where you can come join us. Let's talk about that. All right, three minutes over. Sorry, everybody. Out of time. Ah, three minutes is not, not terrible. We're so good usually, so let this, <laughs> that's one, right. let this one go. We, just, we wanted to spend <laughs> a little more time with Sophia on her birthday. Is yeah, really what it was. that's right. Uh, happy birthday, Sophia. Uh, Thank you, everyone. You're awesome. Have a great day. And we will see you, you here next time, next week, same time. All right. Bye. Bye, everyone.